What's up, YouTube? Dylan here with Dylan's Home Espresso Bar and Brista Brittany joining us yet again for a, another fun live show for you guys. Oh, yeah. Today we are going to be a little and then we're going to have some fun afterwards. Uh, I just picked up a little tiny milk pan. Uh, I just picked up a little tiny milk pitcher that should be good for some latte art. Uh, it's a little smaller than I thought it was going to be. However, that's okay. We are going to still try to pour some amazing latte art anyways. So what is today's video about? Well, today I am going to make the decision first and foremost for myself. You guys can be the judge of it through the video, whether you should use your Brita filters for your espresso machines. Will this ruin your espresso machine? Well, we're gonna look into a little bit of facts that I found online and I was extremely intrigued because I have been using this since day one uh, of owning my Barista Express, now my dual boiler, and I plan on buying a more expensive machine soon. So should I be using this or not? So that is the question that I am hoping to answer for you guys and I will give you my final thoughts on whether or not I will be using a Brita filter to filter out my water from tap. So this is what we are going to do. I have two different glasses. With these two different glasses, I am and I will pour one with the tap water from our kitchen, which I have been putting in the Brita filter. We are going to be using a digital TDS meter. So just a second here. I am going to show you guys right here. So what does TDS stand for? Well, it is the total dissolved solids TDS. So it is the term to describe the inorganic salts and small amounts of organic matter present in solution in water. The principal constituents are usually calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium cations and carbonate, hydrocarbonate, chloride, sulfate, and nitrate ions or anions. So what does that mean? So we are going to be taking a look at this kind of test that I have here, and it's exactly what this is going to be doing. So if you look at this meter, you see zero is the ideal drinking water from reverse osmosis, uh, microfiltration water, etc. At 50, you're looking at carbon filtration, mountain sprungs, and uh, aquifers. So here we're looking at hard water, which is being about 100, 200, we're looking at marginally, we're just accepting the fact that we have hard water, I guess. So from 300 to 400, that shows and indicates that there is high amounts of total dissolved solvents um, in the actual water itself. And then 500, you want to stay away from that because that is contamination. So we are going to be using almost that exact same meter here today. And we are going to be testing whether or not our Brita filter is actually doing a good job at filtering out the tap water from tap. So we are going to, I will be filling this up. I will take you into the kitchen so you guys know that I am filling it up with my kitchen water. So testing, 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 one, two, three. All right, don't mind the pan in the sink, but here we go. We are going to just fill it up and we are gonna come back to the espresso bar. All right, so now that we filled the cup up, I am going to put it right down here and I'm going to flip that camera angle for you. So here we go. All right. So with these two tests that we are going to be doing, let me get this just right here. All right. So now I will be also pouring the Brita into this cup right here. So we'll just keep an eye on that and I'll set this right next to the cup so we know that that is the Brita. So now what we are gonna do is we are gonna take our TDS meter and we are gonna go ahead and test both of the waters. 
we are just going to turn it on. And you want this to light up green to know that is the optimal drinking water. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this meter back up for reference. Kind of set it aside here. I'll put it over here. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we are going to use the tap water because I wanna see how hard our tap water truly is. And I'll explain why this is important after I get done with the testing. So we're just gonna go ahead and submerge that into water and we are just going to press it and hold. Okay, so as you guys can see, we have 203 parts per million. So looking at the actual sheet right here, you see that 200 is marginally acceptable. However, we are putting this in machines that we pay a lot of money for, knowing, known as our espresso machines. So do we want marginally acceptable water? To me, no, because I pay a lot of money for these and I wanna keep them as good as possible. And scale buildup is a huge reason a espresso machine's life will be cut short. So now we are just going to kind of hold that to kind of clear it off. We'll start it back up. This is going to be the Brita filter water. And we are going to see the main difference between both of these right here. And yes, Jamin, uh, you asked if I'm going to be comparing it with third water, uh, third wave water. Yes, I have third wave water coming. Uh, it should be here uh, by tomorrow. So I will definitely be uh, dissolving that in distilled water and I will be doing the test again to see if we get any kind of different results. However, here we go. This is the Brita filter water. So let's see. Okay, so 140. So 140 is a lot better. It is still marginally acceptable, uh, still shows that you have hard water. So with this test, does it mean everything? No. However, does the Brita work? Technically speaking, yes. Now, is this something that I have been putting into my machine? Should I have been? No. If I had done this test sooner, I would not have put that or that into my espresso machine. So unfortunately, for the last year, I have been putting the Brita filter water in my espresso machine. Now, yes, it is better than the tap water, but based off this meter, it's still not good to put inside of my espresso machine. So I am going to do the test with third wave water, probably either tomorrow or the next day and compare all three of them for you. So I'm going to show you what kind of causes um, hard water can do to other scale that I found online here. So this is showing just, again, the marginally acceptable. So uh, US maximum is 500 plus, and that means that you definitely need to get better filtered water because that is contaminated water, and that actually could be extremely harmful for your health. So because of the US, it could vary based on different areas of where you live. So hardness of water, why is this bad for espresso machines? Well, right here it shows high TDS indicates, so total dissolvable solvents uh, indicates hard water, which causes scale buildup in pipes and valves, inhibiting performance. So when putting this inside of your espresso machine, this could be really detrimental to the lifespan of the machine itself. And that's because scale buildup is uh, really wears down components, especially your, uh, your boilers. And it also does not allow, it pretty much restricts the flow of water through all of your pipes because of, of, of the buildup in your machines. So if we come over here, I am going to show you this right here. Let me just, Sorry guys. All right. So this is just pretty much showing that scale refers to the mineral deposits that amass when water with calcium and magnesium is heated. So because scale buildup does not affect the taste of the water, it often goes unchecked until substantial damage is done. So what does this mean for our espresso machines? It means that if you do not perform maintenance regularly on your espresso machines,
run based on heating up elements inside of any machine. Right now we are talking about the espresso machine. It could cause scale buildup. And if you don't descale your machine as often as you should, and you don't back flush as often as you should, and you are using water kind of like that I am using with the Brita filter, it could damage your machine without you maybe even being aware of it. So I am going to be showing you some pictures of scale buildup inside of espresso machine boilers in a commercial setting. So here is one that I found extremely interesting. So on this side, you see this was before the scale buildup really started to occur. Obviously, this is an extreme case of scale buildup. However, this picture on the left side right over here is really, really bad. I mean, this espresso machine is going to uh, definitely going to have to have a lot of TLC and it's, I can tell you it's not going to be used anytime soon unless they are changing out those boilers. So that is a rare case of scale buildup. However, it is definitely um, something to be cautious about when putting the water inside of your espresso machines. So here is just another picture of scale buildup. This one's obviously not as bad. However, you can see the lines and everything pretty much being impacted. And this is just something that you need to be aware of and you need to know that obviously water doesn't seem like a huge part of an espresso drink. However, it does impact the taste and also the machine's usability. So uh, right here, this is another one that I found extremely important to kind of take away. And the biggest part right here that I want you guys to see is this line right down here. So it says, for most optimal results, the Specialty Coffee Association of America recommended hardness above 35 and below 85 parts per million. So obviously, as you saw, without the Brita, it was about 170, that is tap. Now with the Brita, it was down to about 140. So when looking at the meter and showing what we have with the Brita, it just pretty much proves that scale buildup is so much more uh, possible with a harder water. And as you see, uh, we'll run this test again just to make sure all of this was extremely accurate. And we will do the test one more time. So we get 206. We're gonna go ahead and clear that. And then with the Brita, we get 145. So definitely, definitely something to keep in mind because obviously we pay a lot of money for these espresso machines and you want to take care of them on a daily basis. So I would say stay away from descaling too, too often because uh, a lot of the higher end espresso machines, uh, like talking to La Morzacco, talking to the companies like Slayer, uh, any kind of huge espresso uh, machine in commercial use, they actually say that you should never descale your machine. Uh, they say that if you use the proper water, filtration, osmosis water to begin with, you should never actually have to go through a descale. So they actually said that descaling is something that is really bad for the machine. However, obviously if you're using stuff like this at home, descaling is better uh, is a better option than using just this with no descale. So they recommend that you flush your machine uh, if you're in a commercial setting daily. Uh, however, if you're at a home use, I usually flush mine every week. So I'll flush mine once or twice per or costing me a little bit more money. However, I want to keep those lines clean and that group head nice and fresh as well. And that is when I'm doing the back flush. It takes about five minutes of your time and it's going to save you money in the long run because your machine is going to last as long and as efficient as possible. So obviously this was just a simple test here. Uh, I'm going to get way more in depth here uh, coming up on a uh, future video but definitely would recommend to make sure that you test your water at home so that you know the total parts per million and how hard 
your water truly is because that is going to be a huge factor when determining how long your machine is actually going to last. So definitely want to be cautious of scale buildup. Obviously now I showed you pictures that were really, really bad and the scale buildup, I mean, they just must not have cleaned their machine at all. Um, however, they might have also been from uh, somewhere who has harder water than we do. So our water isn't awful. It's obviously the average water for a household. The Brita just makes it a little bit cleaner. However, definitely recommend to check your water. So I definitely would recommend buying one of these TDS meters. I bought this off of Amazon. I think it was like $13.99. I will leave it in the uh, comments below in the description. So make sure you go check out uh, my video afterwards to get the link to this right here. Jamin so, said he tries to keep his water below 85 ppm on the TDS meter. Yeah, so um, definitely I will be making my own water at home and I will also be using my third wave water when it comes in. So I definitely will pretty much show you the difference between the third wave water and my homemade water. Uh, when I start using that for my machine because obviously after doing the test today and doing some extensive research on the topic uh, This is not a good option to put in your uh, Espresso machine now obviously if this is the only thing you have this is better than your tap water However, I still do not recommend to use this drinking it for just at home use without putting it inside an espresso machine Yes, that's not gonna hurt you However, putting it into an espresso machine, you pay a lot of money for them. So definitely spend a little bit more on your water and be a little bit more conscientious when putting water into your machine. So that is all for the testing of the water today. I hope that I shine some light on scaling and total parts per million for hardness of water for you guys today. Like I said, I will be going more in depth in a later video uh, about why you should not be using this. I will get into a lot more technical terms. I just kind of wanted to scratch the surface today and just make you guys aware of the water that you are putting in your machine. So now that we get the seriousness kind of out of the way, we're going to make some lattes. And the latte that I am going to be trying to pour some latte art in is this new cup that I got. It's by L Beans. Um, and it's kind of cool. It's got like a little butterfly on it. Kind of cool. Yeah. Um, like and the spout's just a little bit different. It's not as high as like a slow pour spout where it's kind of like diagonal up here, but it definitely does have a little unique spout to it. So we're going to try our best and see what we can do. So work area here and I am going to get to making some espresso. My dogs are running all over the place. So you probably hear their feet everywhere. <laughs> but that is okay. Just gonna go ahead and put everything away. Kind of clear everything up so that way I have some room. For personal benefit, look up heat exchanger coefficient. It will help you understand heat loss with scale buildup. That's okay. what Jamin said. I will definitely look that up. Could you bring this other glass for me here really yeah. quick? So just one moment here. Dylan's cleaning stuff up right now, so I'm just waiting for him. Now you're back. All right, so sorry about that delay there. So we are going to be using the Specialita, since everybody seemed to really, really enjoy that on the last video. So I will go ahead and, or not Specialita, the Adam 75. So we are going to be dosing out about 18.5 grams today. 
So far, I think that 18.5 grams is best, and I've been able to dose that um, pretty much uh, consistently with the 2.9 seconds that it takes. So we're gonna try that out again. I have been using this uh, dosing funnel, which has been awesome. It's magnetic, so it's obviously not gonna fall and it's gonna save you a lot of headache down the road when you are going to be dosing out. So go ahead and not make the mistake again and weigh this. Make sure that goes back to zero. Perfect. All right, so here we go. All right, so we will go ahead and weigh that. And yeah, 18.7, we will take that. So pretty fast to get 18.7 grams there. So now we will go ahead and bring it over here. I like to just give it a couple taps just to get any of the coffee grounds out of the dosing funnel. Kind of give it a couple taps. So there's no big gaps around the edge, but just don't hit it too hard because you also don't want to break up the puck because that can lead to channeling and just a bad shot overall. So this was dialed in yesterday, but it could be worse today. So now that we have that all prepared, we will come over to the espresso machine. Flush out that machine because it's important. Lock that in. Hi, Mr. Thomas. All right. So now I'm gonna get you guys all set up here. So again, sorry for all the movement. I will try to get some better updated equipment so that way I can do a little bit true, smoother tra uh, transitions here. So I'll go ahead and raise you guys up. And I will zoom in a little bit more and turn that spotlight on for you guys. So let's pull ourselves a shot of espresso. So we got a little bit of channeling, not too much. Streams came together pretty good. All right. So looked pretty good there. Uh, we got 38 grams in about 29 seconds. So definitely not bad. I will take that every time. All right. Let me go ahead and put you guys down here now. I'm moving you guys all around. I'm sorry. I just feel like they're on a roller coaster. Right, we're just on a roller coaster. Whee! <laughs> all right, so I'm going to give you a look at the shot here. Shot looks extremely good. Um, we got a lot of tiger striping going on there. So shot looks real good, real thick. So nice golden texture look to it. And I will go ahead and give that a try here too. So we're gonna go ahead and kinda break that crema up, get that nice little gold texture. And I will give it a try before I go ahead and pull some latte art. All right. Really good. So it's not bitter, it's not sour at all. Definitely get some uh, sweet notes to, uh, coming out of that. Now, still need to get better at figuring out those tasting notes. 
Um, I did eat something right before we came on live, so my taste buds are kind of impacted right now, but I will definitely keep trying to get those tasting notes for you guys. However, I'm going to start and make a latte for my wife. So, we are going to go ahead and... Hi, Ray. Pour some milk. And then I will kind of show you guys the process uh, over here. All right, I hope this is a good angle for all of you. So now we are just going to incorporate all of that air and microphone, make it all one big uniformed pour here for our latte art. No, all right, so we're almost done here. Milk's getting pretty warm and good. So pretty quick process here. Go ahead and Clean that steam wand because you don't want milk buildup. It's one thing to worry about scale buildup. Now you got to worry about milk buildup. So you want to make sure you just purge that steam wand and purge all that excess milk out of there. All right, so now I will go ahead and attempt to pour some latte art. I hope this is a good view. My wife is on the other end to see if this is a good view. So definitely made the milk way too thick. However, we're just gonna transfer it a couple more times to try loosening up that milk because we don't want all of that. All right. So is this a good view? Mm -hmm. All right. So we got a little bit of latte art there. It's a bit hard to pour because obviously this milk pitcher is kind of small, so. I wasn't able to use as much milk as I froth, so definitely a little bit of milk wastage there. But for what it is, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna try adding some extra designs because you know, we're just learning here. Might as well use some more milk. <laughs> Don't know how this is gonna work, but you know, it's just. George says hi. Hi, George. So we're gonna go ahead and ruin this, I'm sure. But sometimes like, they do like drops and then they draw. Yeah, it ain't working. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, you're just having fun with it. Oh yeah. Linda's on. Hi Linda. Look at that. Now that is a real cappuccino. Woo! Woo! All right, we're gonna give that a try. Honey, do the honors. All right, so she's gonna go ahead and give it a taste try right here. How does it taste? Pretty good. But yeah. you don't like it because it's not sweet. <laughs> it's not bad, but I like it. So we are going to Britneyify this drink <laughs> by adding a couple pumps of vanilla. Make it unhealthy. Perfect. <laughs> And then we are going to add some Torani's caramel syrup. If you guys have not tried this, definitely try it out. I like to just start and just give a little bit of caramel. That's probably a lot more than a little bit. And then I will give this to my wife. And she will just mix it all up and drink it and enjoy. 
So I am going to make Thanks. myself another latte here. Um, I will use the Adam 75 again. So let's see. I am going to be using a different milk pitcher this time. I'm going to go back with my black one there. Kind of set these off to the side. And then grab another milk pitcher. So I like to use A2 milk. Uh, definitely is a lot better for my stomach. So a little bit more expensive, but definitely worth it. I know a lot of you guys, uh, since I've made the recommendation of A2 milk, have tried it. So definitely let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Um, it's, it's my favorite and I think it definitely gives a creamier taste to the coffee. Hmm, Linda said, I just bought Ghirardelli caramel. And then Ray said, that looks like dessert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then George said, are you guys in Chicago area? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We are in. All right, so I just like to flush it out just to make it as clean as possible here. And then you don't have to do this, but every time I just like to take the basket out, kind of wipe it all off. Not necessary, it's just something that I always do for the most part. All right, so now I will go ahead and pull another shot i'll bring you guys closer here so you guys can get more into the action into the action oh that's cool george is in indianapolis oh that's not too far from us mm -hmm. and then ray said is it a brand or type of milk a2 is the brand yes right? a2 is the brand so i'm actually going to try a different angle here for all of you guys we are going to see if I can get above the grinder so you guys can really see how fast it truly comes out. So again, you're going to use our dosing funnel to be weighing it out. So I'll put this on the scale. So thank you guys so much for that suggestion to put it up like that. And now... I'm going to show you how fast it actually comes out. So I hope you guys have a good look there. So let's see if you're going to be able to see that. So yeah, you'll be able to see that pretty good. All right. So pretty fast there. I am going to go ahead and weigh it back on the scale. So again, 18.2. So... Last time it was 18.5 or 18.6, so it's about 0.4 grams off. So obviously there is a little kind, uh, there's a little bit of an inconsistency with the grinder. However, that is okay. We are just going to roll with the amount of grams that we just got. So we're going to be using 18.2 grams here. So just give it a couple taps and you see it all releases from the dosing funnel. Kind of give it a couple taps here and you guys can just see how fluffy those grounds truly are so definitely really fast and extremely accurate i'm gonna go ahead and distribute and then tamp get a nice even bed there and we are going to come and pull our shot of espresso. So again, the last shot was really good. Let's hope that we can just mimic that here. So we're going to go ahead and flush our machine. And let's go ahead and use a shot glass for this one. And 
then I will move you guys back down to the ground here so you guys can see the extraction. I think that's the best part about a bottomless porta filter. So we are going to stay consistent with that. All right. Here we go. I'll get you close up and into the action as possible here. Hopefully that is still clear. And here we go. So obviously a lot of channeling there from the last shot. Uh, so you see it spewing out a little bit there. Still came together. Obviously it's a little too fast for my liking. So we got 37 grams in 23 seconds. So not too, too bad, but not ideal. Because I was looking for more of 36, which is still pretty close. I will still take that. I just need to prevent that channeling a little bit more. But that's going to come with time and more practice with my technique. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys back here. The right. All right. And then, like I said, I will get all of the questions as soon as I finish up here and I will try to answer as many questions as you guys may have. So just going to put you guys down so you guys can see the whole milk frothing process. I'll try to get you guys a better angle though. So get a nice look at the shot. So shot looks pretty good here. Um, really rich and creamy looking, nice golden color. So definitely a nice looking shot. So let's go ahead and froth some milk. All right, so I'll put this over to the side and I'll start frothing some milk. All right, so if you guys haven't already, uh, make sure to give this video a like as it helps me and it helps show the world my video so a lot more people can stay in touch with me and my wife and I can keep making good content. Already, please subscribe and we would really appreciate it. All right, so right now I'm just adding a little bit of air. And now I will be incorporating all that air and microfoam into the milk. Um, this is just extremely important that you want to get that rolling motion going so you get that nice even pour when you go to the latte art. So I go until it gets too hot to touch. It's about now. So I have also found that A2 milk is also a lot easier to froth which at first I thought it was harder, but then the more I got used to it, it just was a lot easier of a process. So definitely check out A2 Milk for both health reasons and to help get that really nice microphone. So I'm gonna turn that off just so you guys can see that nice silky texture there. And then thanks to my wife, we have a nice clean cup. So I will go ahead and dump that espresso shot inside of the glass. And then transfer over to another pitcher. Give it a couple taps. And let's try and pour some latte art. Oh, you have a lot of questions. George said we are practically neighbors by internet standards because <laughs> he lives in Indianapolis. 
Uh, Ray said, oh, sorry, European here, so we don't have A2 milk. Aw. Oh, darn. All right, so, again, not the best latte art. However, we are getting something, so that is a good start. Something is better than nothing. Something is better than nothing. It's not about how great it looks. It's how great it tastes. So, once again, I will give you guys a taste test, and we are going to go ahead and answer some questions. That's right. That's right. And then we gotta get to stepping soon. All right, here we go. Delicious. <laughs> I say it all the time, but it truly is really good. Um, I would say that uh, I froth the milk a little bit too, too much. So it is a little bit more like a cappuccino as opposed to a flat white. Of a foam on top. And then most of it is just nice creamy milk with the coffee. So definitely a little bit more froth texture than I like. However, still really good and enjoyable. I like mine like this without adding any kind of extra sugar or caramel or anything to it. But um, you guys can enjoy it any way that you guys like. Um, a lot of people uh, like the Ghirardelli white chocolate as well as the Torani's caramel syrup. I bought the uh, vanilla syrup from Starbucks. So definitely all good options. You can sprinkle some uh, hot cocoa mix in there, add some Hershey syrup. So a lot of options when it comes to um, coffee. Brittany sometimes likes to add, um, I don't even know, I don't even want to say that. They're like wafers, but mm -hmm. I'll probably mispronounce that name. They're but, good. Yeah, these are really good. So especially if you like a uh, coffee, but kind of use it for like a dessert, definitely try out these. These are extremely good and just a nice little evening treat for you guys if you guys aren't watching your weight for that day. <laughs> so um, what are any questions that anybody has for me? George said, I need good non-lactose milk. Do you or Brittany know one? Good lactose-free milk. I so the brand. I know one. Um, what about that barista O? Is that, that's one of them, isn't it? Yeah, that could be an option. So I have not used barista O. Uh, they actually don't sell it at our local grocery store. So I will definitely look into different kind of uh, lactose Lactose free milk, is that what you said? Yeah. Uh, and then I will definitely order some and have them on my channel, kind of compare them with the A2 milk, the regular whole milk, and just kind of compare those so I can get back to you. And I hope to share my opinions based on the milk. So uh, I'll definitely look into that for you. And then Go Jake Go said, does the Atom 75 come with any accessories or like the dosing funnel? So... The Atom 75 stock comes just like this. So it just comes with your standard hopper and then just a plastic lid. So I think they could have done a better job with putting some kind of rubber seal around either the lid or the top part of the bean hopper because obviously the biggest thing when keeping beans into a bean hopper is the beans get stale a lot faster. So they were to upgrade it is to put a rubber seal around here or i could even look into adding something like that they also make what's called a blow up hopper which is pretty much uh, the same hopper that it comes with and then it has this rubber piece that's kind of convex kind of concave over here i think concave is the right word and then you put this lid back on it so that way you can push down and it sends air through the hopper and through the chute so it becomes more of a zero retention grinder um, it's online for a hundred dollars i believe it's on sale right now for 70 so i definitely will look into getting one of those so that i can compare the single dosing function between the eureka and also the niche so that is this is standard except you can buy the accessory for the blow up um did you consider other espresso machines before buying this one i am looking at the breville dual boiler uh hold on i'm looking at the breville dual boiler and the Rosilio. silvia. silvia yeah so i That's did so i will bring you here into the kitchen 
because this is unfortunately where my espresso machine is. So this is where my Barista Express is. Um, I absolutely love my Barista Express. I do still use it in the mornings. For video, I more so use the dual boiler for now. Um, that is just because I am waiting on some extra equipment, uh, extra furniture for my coffee bar area so I can put all of my stuff inside of my coffee bar. But I would definitely recommend if you are first time um, looking for an espresso machine to definitely look into getting the Barista Express. It comes with the uh, built-in grinder right here, which is amazing. It does hold a little bit retention, but you can get rid of that by just kind of going back and forth right here and suctioning out the beans. Um, it is fairly quiet, so it's a little bit louder starting out, but it is quiet when you're actually going through the process. So I'll just show you here. So that's it. That's the only noise that you hear really when you're starting up the machine. So not too, too loud at all. Uh, definitely is a good investment. I believe this is online right now for $700. Uh, I would definitely say that this is a great espresso machine. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to froth your milk. It's about a minute and 15 seconds. It takes a little bit of time. Obviously, you can't pull the shot and froth your milk at the same time. Uh, however, it does take about 10 to 15 seconds after you pull your shot once you turn that steam wand on to kind of kick on fully. So, that is just one downside. However, this is a fantastic espresso machine. It's an all-in-one. You're paying $700, but you do not have to buy a aftermarket or just any kind of different grinder because it obviously comes with it. Now, when you're looking into buying something like the dual boiler, it obviously is a great machine. However, it does not have a grinder on top or anywhere on the machine. So you're looking at 15 to $1,600 for the machine, plus you about half the amount, which is like the price of the niche. So about $800. So you're looking at about 22 to $2,300 now when buying the dual boiler because your grinder is almost, or if not as important as your espresso machine. So definitely would recommend that when looking into the budget when buying a new machine. So my wife's just gonna come back here and look at the rest of the questions and we will continue on with the video. All right. I hope that helps and I will be making more content on the Barista Express as soon as my furniture comes back. Um, next question. Um, have you ever tried carnation powdered milk? I have not. I have never even actually heard of carnation powdered milk before. Um, I'm going to write that down so that way I can look that up. With water, I'm assuming? Maybe. Uh, um, who asked that question? Uh, Rit, er, no, George did. George. Um, yeah. So... I would, I'm definitely interested to know, do you add any kind of water to that? Or how, how does that come? Does it come, uh, obviously it's a powder. Uh, I, I don't know. Have you ever heard of that before? No, I haven't. Linda said that, I think Linda said she's tried it before if I, yeah. Oh, she said she's bought it, but not tried it. She's bought it, but not tried it. Yeah. Well, definitely if you have tried it or you have it and you're planning on trying it, definitely let us know. Uh, in upcoming videos or in the comments below because that's something that I have actually never heard of. Yeah, George said, Brittany and Dylan, we are getting 11 inches of snow. What about Chicago? Well, I mean, I can show you our current status right mm. now. So, I mean, we're getting uh, quite the amount of snow. So if you guys can see that, I don't know if that's easy for you to see, but we're getting quite a bit. Believe it or not, there is a step there somewhere. So. <laughs> oh, Linda said yes. You can use water to make carnation powdered milk. So yeah, that is our current situation. Uh, I love the snow. I think it's fun, but obviously when it just keeps coming down like this, <laughs> not very fun. Yeah. But yeah, that is the current condition that uh, that we are in. I think we are scheduled. I think didn't. My cousin said that we are scheduled to be getting about eight, eight inches. Yeah, within so five to eight. 
five to eight inches within 28 hours or within 24 hours so definitely going to be getting quite the uh the snowfall here even sooner than we thought um andy said with the amount of coffee dylan drinks i don't think beans stay in the hopper too long <laughs> no so i actually just use a so this bag was completely full um two two days ago yeah two days ago and we're at about less than a third of the bag so kind of sad but mm -hmm. it's a good thing i have more bags over here linda uh, asks do you single dose all the time dylan so i mostly single dose obviously lately i have not been because of the new grinder that i just purchased mm -hmm. uh, i am filling the hopper with that grinder but uh, normally, yes, with the niche, I was single dosing every single day and results uh, day in and day out with the zero retention single dosing grinder. So definitely recommend to single dose. I would not recommend to fill the hopper, mm -hmm. but unfortunately with a machine like this, you're definitely going to have to fill the hopper because number one, it's going to impact the speed, which is not huge, but you're going to be going through more of a struggle trying to get those 2.2 grams that are retained out as opposed to just filling that hopper up so yeah um, i only fill it about a quarter of the way just for enough to pull like two shots it's still enough momentum to recommend it for at home use Andy said, time for some snowmobiles. <laughs> About the snow, because all the snow that, we got. That might be dangerous. I've, I've been on one of them one time, and I mean, it was fun, but I'm a daredevil, so I like to try to do different things that I've never done before. <laughs> and sometimes it just doesn't work out. <laughs> Let's just say I fell off one. Linda said, yeah, we are conserving energy, so power keeps coming on and off during our world, yet storms. Oh. Well, hopefully uh, you have a backup generator. Um, I think I don't think Texas has been hit this hard no, for a long time. No, she said Texas definitely not used to single digits. <laughs> no. Yeah, and I didn't think so. When I saw that online, I was kind of shocked. And then I, yeah. I think you said something about it on Hoon's Live today. So definitely look into getting that, and I hope everything gets better for you. So yes. definitely not fun to run out of power, especially with it being single digits. So I have an unrelated coffee question, or it's not related to coffee, I mean. So, whoever has an iPhone, I need your opinion. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Your broken iPhone? I just dropped my phone again, uh, and it finally, the screen stopped working. So I'm wondering, should I fix my screen again? I've already gotten it fixed before. Or should I get a new phone? What do you think? What do you think? I think you could take my phone and then I could get the iPhone 12. You already have <laughs> the iPhone 12. No, it's the 11. Oh, well, they have. I looked it up. It said iPhone 11, you can get it for $10 a month. Oh. So I was considering that. I would say the iPhone 11, though. I mean, I don't As know what you guys think, but I think you still have the iPhone like, 8, right? Yeah, I, it's old. I mean... Let's see. No, you're staying on the spotlight. You oh, asked geez. the question. <laughs> so Sorry, she, it's not she has the iPhone 8. So oh, yeah. I should have said that. To iPhone me. 8 Plus. Yeah. Definitely cheaper to replace the screen, but it just depends on how your old phone is. Yeah. And then that was Linda. Andy yeah. says, time to upgrade phones. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Yeah, I think they, uh, they're all telling you to upgrade the phone. <laughs> They're all like upgrade. Jamin said time to upgrade. Yeah. For ten dollars more a month, what is that for two years? Yeah, I think so. I mean so it's like two hundred and forty bucks at that point. Yeah. And I paid it off like how many months ago? At least a few months ago. Ray said iPhone eight, comma, definitely get a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been trying to be good <laughs> and not get a new phone. Oh wait. <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. Comments? Yeah, we got more comments here. <laughs> let's see. Jamin said, my son has the 12 and the camera is ridiculously good. Man, I need that one. 
I mean, you could trade yours, or you could let me have yours, I guess. Yeah, how would that even work? Can what they do, do that? Can they do what? Where I could Dylan's use Dylan's coffee gear doesn't help the budget. Linda, <laughs> you are so true. Hey, but right. I do have something coming to the espresso bar soon. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by this weekend. I, I'm not saying what it is, but we are both excited to get this item into our coffee bar area. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably going to go somewhere like here or maybe even here. So I, I don't know what it is. But you guys will Linda definitely said, know what I it have is iPhone Saturday. XR, so that's the 10R, right? Technically. Yeah. Okay. The so past. I could either show you guys what I am getting on Friday or Saturday. So either Friday's live or Saturday's live. Would you prefer live or would you prefer an edited video for the unboxing, as you want to call that? So definitely leave that in the comments below on which one you would prefer, <laughs> live or edited video. <laughs> Jamin said a picture of Jamin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you on my thumbnail, Jamin. <laughs> That's what he's gonna, uh, Jamin said live. So we got one for live. Right, oh, well. Linda live, Mr. Thomas live. Wow, you guys all, all right. like the lives. All awesome. right, well I guess we're gonna be doing this thing live. Live and in action. Live and in action, <laughs> struggles and all. So, are we going to go get me a new phone? Or get you? Either way, I'd be getting the iPhone 11. <laughs> or we could just use... So right now, we're currently using my iPhone to do all of the videos and yeah. editing and everything. So, um, that's why she's saying that she could take my phone and I could get the newer phone. But... Uh, Oh, right. I, don't I think care. it's only fair fine. that she just keeps the newer phone, and this quality is perfectly fine for me. Well, for I'd right be now. getting the same one, the iPhone 11, because the iPhone 12, I think you only get a special deal if you trade in an carrier. eligible, oh. which with my screen being broken, I don't know if that would be eligible. Like, the type of phone is... Okay, so when she says her screen is broken... Oh, yeah. Do it's not just, it? like, broken in one spot. This oh, thing yeah. has glass chunks that are just <laughs> missing out of the whole phone. So Hey, it's been kicking for a while. I just finally uh, it, killed it. Let me see this thing. Yeah, it don't work no more. You have to turn the screen off so that... So it doesn't... Okay, it doesn't look awful. Look at close. But, I mean... It's not good. So that whole half of that screen's missing. It's just the screen protector that's pretty much <laughs> keeping it on. But it's um, sounds like my daughter's phone, huh? Not. So yeah, she's dropped it a couple times. Yeah. Let's we'll just leave it at that. All right. So I think I am going to wrap this video up here. So I can get a phone. Woo. Um, no, because I have to go to work. <laughs> it oh, takes shit. like 18 hours to get a phone nowadays. Um, we could do that this weekend. So I'm not going to be with a phone. I'll get it to work. I'll try my best. <laughs> I'll try my technical, technological skills. Um, it is currently 5.20 p.m. And I plan on going live on Instagram at 7. Um, don't really know what we're going to talk about yet, but... My machine's possessed. Um, we are definitely going to be coming on live at 7. So uh, I thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are watching and you guys have not yet liked and subscribed to my our channel, uh, definitely like and subscribe to our channel as this helps us tremendously when making more content for you guys. And it's just going to allow me to get more coffee gear for you guys at home so I can do more reviews because I think that is important to show all of you guys for future machines. So, as always, Dylan with Dylan's Home Espresso Bar, Barista Brittany, D&B's Home Espresso Bar. <laughs> We're just going to use all these different titles. <laughs> so, as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will catch you guys yeah. at Instagram today at 7 p.m. Right. See you guys there. Bye. Peace.